join me if you will and if you can as we sing America the Beautiful. <laughs> Reading from 2 Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all consolation who consoles us in our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, uh, as you know, Memorial Day is uh, so many times been confused with the time when we celebrate people who served in the service. We are thankful for them. But today we remember those that have given their lives for us. Join with me now as we pray. In the quiet sanctuaries of our own hearts, let each of us name and call on the one whose power over us is great and gentle, firm and forgiving, holy and healing. You who created us, who sustain us, who call us to live in peace, hear our prayers this day. Hear our prayer for all who have died, whose hearts and hopes are known to you alone. Hear our prayer for those who put the welfare of others ahead of their own and gave, give us hearts as generous as theirs. Hear our prayer for those who gave their lives in service to others and accept the gift of their sacrifice. Help us to shape and make a world where we will lay down the arms of war and turn our swords into plowshares for a harvest of justice and peace. Comfort those who grieve the loss of their loved ones. And let your healing be the hope in our hearts. Hear our prayer this day. And in your mercy, answer us. In the name of all that is holy, the peace of God be with each of you. Amen. We're going to sing two songs in a row now, and so you can stay seated for both of them. Uh, we're going to sing the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which is a great hymn for us to sing on this day. The words for the Battle Hymn of the Republic come right out of the book of Revelation for the most part. So as we sing that, uh, if, it, if it makes you, it, let's go ahead and stand. Let's do it. Let's stand. Let's stand.
You know, when we think of memorial services, funerals, the end of something and the beginning of something else, sometimes we don't know where to go, which way is up. I was at a meeting the other day and a friend of mine was talking about all of the different, you know, the, if you live to be older, as we were talking about a while ago, Jeannie and I, as you live to be older, you get to go to more funerals, it seems like. And uh, sometimes they're just very sad. And other times people go there sad and leave there with the joy in their hearts knowing that this wasn't the end, it's the beginning of something new. And they actually walk away from that service feeling hopeful because they know that they'll see that person again, they'll be with that person again. So I started off this week thinking about those people that have given their lives in the military and in uh, first responders, police and firemen and EMT people, of the people that stood in the gap all during the pandemic for us, many of them had a funeral at the end of the day. And I thought to myself, well, how can, I, how can I ever find the words to lift up the day that we celebrate as Memorial Day appropriately to the people that are coming here knowing it's the first day of summer. It's the beginning of, of a great time. It's, we're looking forward to summer camp and, and all of the joy that comes with that season. But not today. Not this weekend. This weekend we should remember those people that gave everything so that we could get in our cars and drive here today. Amen. Those people that protect us and serve us and I would include so many more people than just military folk, but certainly those are first and foremost in our list. So as I prayed and I thought, well, how can I transmit this message in some form or fashion from God today to us on this very important day? A day that we need to remember. And so I turned to Ecclesiastes. For everything there's a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born. A time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. May God add His blessing to the reading of His Holy Word. Thanks, Thanks be God. God. So I entitled this message today, What Time Is It For You? A time to be born? And Christians, we, we don't think of that the same way as physical birth, do we? As Christians, it's a time to be born again. It's a time to be different. It's a time to be renewed in the Spirit. And we're well aware that there's a time to die. These are not God-appointed times. These are times that happen to us 
And God is telling us through these scriptures in Ecclesiastes that these are part of the plan of life. How it happens, God didn't set that into action. We were given, according to the scriptures, three score and ten. If we're given more than three score and ten, we're lucky. But there will be a time that I. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. I'm reading a book right now called Next. Next. It's the next church after COVID. None of us are asleep at the wheel on this. We know that the church hasn't been doing that great for a number of years. When we read this one, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what's planted, sometimes we're going to plant and never see the plucking. We celebrated last night three people that are a part of this church, have been a part of this church, off and on since 2009, that celebrated years of sobriety because they were participating in the ministries done by here. Some of you have never been to a Saturday night service, but you're a part of it because we provide that here. So many things we've done in church over the years, we did them just because we always did them. Sometimes tradition is good. But you know, the Coke company found out what happens when you come out with the new Coke, right? Some people like the old Coke. They didn't want the new Coke. There's a commercial right now, you've probably seen it on TV, where the guy's talking about his wood paneling on his old station wagon. It shows inside of the house, he's got a dial phone, you know, he's this how we speed dial. <laughs> There's some things need to be plucked up. Yep. There is a time to plan. <laughs> and a time to pluck up what's been planted, what time is it for you? There's a time to kill and a time to heal. This week has really put me in a place to think the time for killing, I don't seem to the world seems to provide that, but I think God has called us to be a part of the healing. How do we heal from thousands lost in war? How do we heal? from 19 second and third fourth graders. We could spend hours talking about what went wrong. We could spend hours talking about every war we've been in, whether we should have fought where we fought when we fought the way we fought it. Today is a time to heal. What time is it for you? A time to break down and a time to build up. The world has done a great job of breaking down our communities. I think it's time for us to build up. It's time for us to, to reach across to people we don't know. You've heard me say when we have a fifth Sunday lunch, go sit with somebody you don't know. <coughs> Get to know them. Who cares what they think about politics? Uh, my easiest description of this is, look friends, I really don't like strawberry ice cream, but if you do, let's go buy ice cream together. Let's talk. And, and, and that may be easy to say here because y'all are all willing to do it, but let's talk to the people that aren't here. Jesus said, love others the way I love you. Some of us gathered here the other night to watch the Wesley movie. Some of you have seen it over the years. One of the things that has always rung true for me, well, there's two things I remember, is when Charles looked at John and said, the thought of you recreating is nauseating. <laughs> we know people like that, don't we? But then when he in his soul is looking for the faith that he sees others have, 
he's told, he said, his question is, how can I preach faith when my faith is weak? And there he's told, preach, preach faith till you get it. And then preach faith because you have it. I'll never forget being at one of our church preacher meetings and Bishop Norris. Bishop Norris is one of those people, had one of those voices everybody wishes they had. And, and, and he stood up and he said, I'm retiring soon. That's the same thing we're going to hear tonight from Bishop Jones. Bishop Norris said, I'm retiring soon. So now I can just say whatever I want to say. And he said, let me tell you, I believe Jesus really lived. I believe he was really persecuted and crucified and laid in a tomb, but I believe he rose from the dead. Amen. And he said, some of you may be struggling with your faith to believe that. If you are, that's okay. He would use Wesley's words, preach, preach faith till you get it. And then like me, you can preach faith because you have it. time to build up. There's a time to weep. Maybe the events in Uvalde helped us remember that memorials are about weeping. But I know because I've been through it and you have too that over time those tears they do turn to smiles. And we should remember, friends, that we are promised a time to dance for all eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is a time to weep and a time to laugh. And I think, friends, right now with Memorial Day right in front of us, we need to spend more time weeping. We need to grieve the loss of thousands. Right here in our own local community, too many police officers have been killed this year. Too many school teachers in our nation have given their lives to protect children. We can spend hours trying to figure out what went wrong, and we will. But let's don't miss the chance to grieve with the families that lost a second or a third or a fourth grader. Let's don't miss a chance to grieve with those families that lost a loved one in Afghanistan or in Vietnam or in World War I or II or any war. The time to mourn, the time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. The writer of Ecclesiastes is telling us over and over, he ends these things, build up, laugh, dance, gather stones together. My friend Peter Miller said one time, we're all too busy drawing lines and there's always somebody on the other side. Our district superintendent Vincent Harris, I've known Vincent for 20 years, knew him way before he was a district superintendent. We were in a relatively private meeting the other day talking about all the stuff that's going on. And he looked at me and he said, I just can't believe in a God that would exclude me. And I sure don't want to believe in a God that would exclude me. And I'm sure that we all feel the same way. We want to be included. But we're being called by Jesus Christ to include more, to have a circle that gets ever bigger. Not a dying group of people to get together, but an expanding, powerful group of people that go into the world and talk to the people that we don't like. We don't like what they stand for, what they believe in, but we've got to build bridges. We've got to somehow talk to them. There are big cracks in the world. And they need bridges built to cross them. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. What time is it 
for you. A time to seek and a time to lose. Yeah. When I was in the sales world, we had a sales trainer. He said, when you go out and you make a sales pitch to somebody and they don't buy what you're selling, shake their hand like you just made a million dollars, go home and shine your shoes and go back. If that still doesn't work, go home and clean out your closet. You're carrying around stuff. Let me tell you guys, that big white tie you got in your closet ain't coming back. <laughs> we are encumbered by stuff that we're carrying around and the weight is heavy and our shoulders are stooped over. And Jesus says, let me carry half the load. Your load will be light. But we got to let go of some stuff to do it. We're never all going to get everything we want. Which is why the ice cream parlor sells more than one flavor. We can still go out and eat ice cream together. A time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear, a time to sow. Once again, some things have to be broken. I, I tell people all the time, my work in recovery for years has been to tell people it is absolutely okay to fall apart. Because then you can put yourself back together the way God wants you to be. Amen. It's okay that the world is torn up. What's not okay is that we're not doing anything to sew it together. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. But we need this message. We need to know that there is hope. There can be peace. There will be unification in the Spirit. We just want to be a part of making it happen. And we may not get to see all of the growth in what we plant. God will take care of that. Sometimes we forget that He's the one that plants. We plant. He nurtures. He grows. He increases people's faith. I think He called you to be here today. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. Several years ago, a friend of mine called me and says, I have some tickets to go see Peter Paul. You can't see Mary because she's dead. So we went down to the Opry House in Galveston to see Peter and Paul. When they had a Mary part, they had the audience sing it because, you know, we were all old people. We knew the songs. Noel Stuckey, nowadays known as Paul Stuckey, his uh, cousin or brother or something was one of the guys who helped write the books that we used for our liturgy. Noel Paul, he goes by now, is a very, very spiritual guy. And he said, you know, if people go back and listen to our songs from the 60s, they're going to figure out these were, these were uh, antagonistic, protagonistic, rebellion songs. Even Puff the Magic Dragon. Hmm. Y'all know that song. Little Johnny doesn't go back to play. The dragon goes away. It's not a happy song. He also had other songs. They had a bunch of them. But they were songs about protest. Not violent protest. Not taking out and, and hurting people. To just simply sometimes stand up. Sometimes speak out. You never know what the ramifications of what you say will mean to somebody else. A young man came in to see me one time many years ago when I was working in the hospital. He was a FAA qualified mechanic. He was working out at Hobby Airport on private planes. He had everything. He had a beautiful wife. He had plenty of money. And he was a cocaine addict. He was in denial about his cocaine addiction. He thought it was just something he could do when he wanted to. His wife was worried. He wasn't willing to go get help. 
or even to admit that he needed help. Until one day, on a Christmas Eve, she called me. I don't even remember his name. And said he wants to talk to you. I said, what changed? She said, well, I had enough. He was risking everything we had. And when he thought he was going to lose me, when he thought he was going to lose his FAA certification, when he thought he was going to lose everything that was provided for his life the way it was, he decided maybe enough was enough. It was a time to let go. It was a time to stand up. It was a time to speak out. It was a time for him to be saved. A time to love. A time to hate. I think there's a very fine line between love and hate. Sometimes you have to hate something to love it. Sometimes you have to love something to hate it. It's a fine line. But Jesus Christ's love is a kind of love that surpasses understanding. What Jesus says to us is, I go and prepare a place for you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love others as I have loved you. And he said that in the midst of a world that hated him. Why did they hate him? He was turning it upside down. John Wesley, people hated him. Let me tell you, if you think being a Methodist is a good thing today, in those days, it was one of those words they used to describe him. They said, he is one of those Methodists. Because he had a method. He had a plan. It was more than a dream. It was a plan. Remember that Scripture is important. It's primary. It's the thing that we base our life and our understanding on. Remember that tradition is important and reason. We have to know when it applies and when it doesn't. And then we have to have an experience. And I pray that everyone would have had and will have and will continue to have heartwarming experiences where you know that you, you are one of the ones Jesus died for. A time for war and a time for peace. So when I think of Memorial Day, friends, these words come to my mind. There's a time for us to party. There's a time for us to celebrate. But today, this Memorial Day is a time for us to remember. And I'm not sure I would have got the full grasp of that had what happened in Uvalde not happened, and I've seen the what I'm going to call kind of a circus that's going on around that. Friends, those families have lost six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds. They need time to grieve. We'll figure it out later. But no figuring it out isn't going to bring those people back. Figuring it out isn't going to bring the people we lost in World War II or Vietnam or any of those other places back. Today, let's grieve their loss. Let's remember the gift they gave us. And let's dance in the joy of being free people that live in a free world and are able to do the free things we do. That's what they would have wanted. They didn't give their lives so we could be at each other's throat. They gave their lives so that we could live in the world, the dream of the United States of America. I can't even count the people I think of. Oh, it certainly is the military people. It's those first responders. It's those police officers that gave their life for us. But it's a whole lot of people that have put us in a place today to stand on their shoulders to move forward. 
that gave their lives in service to our country, to mankind, to, to the community in general. And today we need to be thankful and remember. Now that doesn't mean we can't smile. And we can't be joyful. And we can't be thankful. But let's do it in the spirit of remembering what they gave us. As we gather together to, to celebrate Memorial Day, celebrating it is a time to remember it as a time when peace can be made. They fought for our peace. What time is it for you? What time is it for us? What time is it for Christians? Two point some odd billion of us. If we could get past our disagreements about denominational rules, if we could get past our quibbling about how deep the baptismal water ought to be, whether there ought to be a guitar or an organ or a piano or whether we should use media or have loudspeakers or air conditioning or not. We could get, well, everybody wants air conditioning. But if we could just get past that, we have enough of us to transform the world. What time is it for you? I'm going to go to a conference today and there's going to be some preachers that are moving. Some churches have anxiety because they're getting new preachers. Some preachers have anxiety because they have new congregations. We're going to sing a song at the beginning of conference that says, Are we yet? Are we yet alive? To bear each other's burdens. To reach out. Churches are like anything else. In so many cases, we like what we like, the way we like it, when we like it. One of the biggest challenges is to realize it may turn into something that I'm not quite as fond of. But if it reaches more people, if it brings more people into the kingdom, if it helps transform the culture where we live, then it's worth it. Wesley started what became a grassroots movement. Friend, I think it's time for those two point some odd billion Christians to start a grassroots movement. We decide who we elect. We decide who we put in power. We decide so many things. Let's unify around that and let's get the common needs that we all have addressed. Oh yeah, safety in schools is important. Our children are important, but safety for us is important too. Those people died in the war with a dream that the United States could be, I don't know, the golden city on the hill. I know they did. I know what my daddy fought for when he was in the service. I know what the people were there for. I know so many people went and joined after 9-11. So many people re-upped again by no different times. They do it because they care about this country. And as that song we sang a while ago says, so should we care about the world. Because friends, we're all in the same human family. We're living through this together. It's my prayer that somehow we find the strength. That we pray for the Holy Spirit to be so unified in our spirit that we get past a few things to solve so many things. When you get a chance, open up Ecclesiastes. It's the third chapter. Read past where I did today. It's one of those powerful pieces of Scripture that to me says, I need to think about what time it is for me. How about you? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we are living in America, so we're going to sing about it. Uh, as you're able, would you stand? And we'll sing together America. We don't pass an offering play right now. There's a basket in the back. We gladly accept your gifts, tithes, and offerings there. Putting them to good use to do these things. To unify our community and the world. Let's work together. Let's sing together now about our country.
somebody you haven't talked to before, get to know them. I think so we can start right here, reaching across and reaching our hands out and get to know somebody new. That's how we practice what we're going to do out there. Friends, it is a, a weekend where you need to be careful. You need to be careful on the roads. There's going to be a lot of people traveling. Uh, remember what you can. Keep your heart in the spirit of what I think Memorial Day was designed to be. And go in peace. Amen. Thank you. 